Based on fossil evidence discovered in Africa, the most widely accepted theory of human evolution says that our ancestors evolved there two million years ago. Then they moved from Africa to Eurasia, and the split between modern humans and our last common ancestor occurred inside Africa, according to the most popular theory. However, is it possible that our last common ancestor actually lived on the westernmost point of Eurasia, commonly referred to as Europe? The majority of anthropologists studying humans continue to support the out-of-Africa narrative. They simply cannot accept that any significant event in human evolution could have occurred outside of Africa. Any conflicting information appears extraordinary only if you already believe that humans were always confined to Africa, and Eurasia was never within the zone of hominization, a concept that pertains to the process of human evolution. Conventional wisdom holds that modern humans, Neanderthals, and Denisovans all descended from an ancient homonym known as Homo heidelbergensis. Homo heidelbergensis, on the other hand, did not appear until 700,000 years ago, after the split between modern humans and Neanderthals and Denisovans. Unlike Homo neanderthalensis and Homo sapiens, the Denisovans have not been assigned a species name. This is because of the growing recognition that this species, which is a sister species to Neanderthals, is actually a metapopulation of Homo sapiens. This rationale also would mean that Neanderthals are also a Homo sapiens metapopulation, an implication that terrifies most paleoanthropologists. Indeed, despite early concern among phylogeneticists with experience beyond the human genus, the molecular out-of-Africa hypothesis has been considered an established fact among population geneticists for some 35 years. The paleoontological support for the hypothesis is also questionable, a situation that has become more pronounced in recent decades as Eurasian paleontological knowledge has grown. New findings indicate that the last common ancestor is more closely related to Neanderthal ancestors than Denisovans implying that the two groups diverged over 430,000 years ago. This is much sooner than geneticists expected. It also changes our timeline. We know that Denisovans and Neanderthals shared an ancestor who diverged from our modern human lineage. Based on new nuclear DNA evidence, this split could have occurred as early as 765,000 years ago. However, previous DNA studies placed this split between 315,000 and 540,000 years ago, but a date of 765,000 years ago aligns the DNA evidence with some recent fossil interpretations, which also point to an earlier divergence between modern humans and the ancestor of the Neanderthals and Denisovans. Indeed, theories about divergence based on ancient DNA and anatomical studies of the fossil record appear to be convergent. Yet, if such an ancient split is correct, we may need to redraw some of our evolutionary tree. The Pit of Bones fossils are the largest collection of Middle Pleistocene Epoch early human fossils ever discovered. Many of these fossils are unusually well preserved, and they are thought to be from 28 different people. As a result, this site can reveal a lot about this 430,000-year-old population. Research must now refocus on fossils dating from 400,000 to 800,000 years ago to determine which ones might actually belong to the Neanderthal, Denisovan, and modern human ancestors. Nonetheless, another conundrum remains. The study confirmed a previous finding that the pit of bones hominins from Spain's mitochondrial DNA is more similar to Denisovans than to Neanderthals, but no one knows why. Perhaps another unidentified lineage of hominins interbred with both ancestors, but not with the specific group of hominins that evolved into the Neanderthals. Perhaps this mitochondrial DNA was typical of early Neanderthals and Denisovans, and Neanderthals only later acquired different mitochondrial DNA from a population of proto-homo sapiens. The task of piecing together the story of human evolution is undeniably difficult. 
two 400,000-year-old fossilized teeth discovered at the Boxgrove site in southern England are similar to fossilized teeth of a similar age discovered among the bones of an estimated 29 individuals at Spain's Pit of Bones site, according to a statement released by London's Natural History Museum. The Boxgrove and Pit of Bones fossils were originally identified as Homo heidelbergensis, but new research on the physical features and analysis of DNA samples from the Spanish fossils suggests they may be early Neanderthals. As a result, the incisors from England's Boxgrove site could represent an early Neanderthal population. The Boxgrove fossils, discovered around 480,000 years ago during the Middle Pleistocene, are the oldest human remains discovered in the UK and were identified as most likely belonging to the ancient human species Homo heidelbergensis. Another site in southeast France, known as Achago, is also considered an early Neanderthal, dated to around 500,000 years ago. Homo heidelbergensis is an early human species, named after a fossil jawbone discovered near Heidelberg, Germany, in 1907. It is widely assumed that this species lived not only in Europe, but also in Africa, and most likely Asia, between 700,000 and 300,000 years ago. Nevertheless, some researchers believe that the name has been applied to far too many fossils from this time period. The entire Heidelbergensis story has become much more complicated since its discovery. Many more fossils have been attributed to Heidelbergensis, and they vary greatly. When the fossils at Pit of Bones were discovered, they were given the name Homo heidelbergensis. One anthropologist wrote that this species has a skull from God and a jawbone from the devil. If a fossil did not appear to be from Homo erectus, Homo sapiens or Neanderthals, it was frequently assigned to Homo heidelbergensis. Some researchers refer to the species as a trash bin species because anything that cannot be classified is thrown away. But subsequent research on the sample revealed that it was much more likely to be an early Neanderthal, based on physical features and DNA analysis. Moreover, the basal mitochondrial DNA divergence between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals and Denisovans occurred 800,000 years ago. The mitochondrial DNA introgression from Homo sapiens into Neanderthals occurred 500,000 years ago, and the basal divergence among extant humans occurred 250,000 years ago. The presence of the two lineages in the same region 300,000 years after the two species diverged 800,000 years ago is supported by mitochondrial DNA introgression from Homo sapiens into Neanderthals. However, because Neanderthals are strictly limited to Eurasia, the coexistence of Homo sapiens and Neanderthals confirms Homo sapiens' presence on this continent. These phylogenetic, geographic and paleontological circumstances, as well as the identity of the divergence between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals, are consistent with an evolutionary scenario that anchors the divergence of Homo sapiens and Neanderthals, as well as mitochondrial DNA introgression from Homo sapiens into Neanderthals in Eurasia findings that reverse the direction of Homo sapiens evolution compared to that assumed. Indeed, the 430,000-year-old genome from an ancient human bone could herald the discovery of a previously unknown species, bringing us closer than ever to our common ancestor with Neanderthals. The Cima de los Huesos, or Pit of Bones, is located 90 feet beneath the surface of the Atapuerca cave system in northern Spain. At least 28 ancient human remains have been discovered at the bottom of this 35-foot vertical shaft. A thigh bone extracted from the pit recently yielded 400,000-year-old DNA, by far the oldest human DNA ever sequenced. The findings indicate that the thigh bone belonged to a previously unknown human species, possibly a missing link between the Neanderthals and their enigmatic cousins, the Denisovans. According to paleontologists, this brings us closer than ever to determining who our common ancestor of the Neanderthals was. The bones predate the appearance of Homo sapiens, which appeared around 300,000 years ago, and are most closely related to Neanderthals. Until now, the genomes of hominin fossils found in cold climates could only be sequenced. DNA breaks down faster in warmer climates like Spain's. 
Scientists extracted 1.95 grams of material from a cave hominin thigh bone, processed it for DNA, and filtered out a large amount of modern human DNA. The bones had been heavily contaminated as they were removed and handled. The end result was a nearly complete mitochondrial genome, which is the DNA found inside the organelles that power cells. Scientists estimated its age at 430,000 years by comparing it to that of modern humans, chimps and bonobos, as well as Neanderthals and Denisovans. This is twice as old as our own species and far older than any hominin genome previously sequenced. This takes us back at least a few hundred thousand years to our common ancestor with other hominins. Because the pit of bones hominin fossils resemble Neanderthals and lived in Europe, where Neanderthals would soon dominate, scientists expected their DNA to resemble Neanderthals, but it proved quite distinct. It is most closely related to the Denisovans, a species discovered in a Siberian cave using only a finger bone and two molars. But scientists are baffled, because there is no evidence that the Denisovans lived anywhere near Spain. The biggest unknown is when and how our ancestors split from the Neanderthals and Denisovans. The circumstances surrounding the later split between Neanderthals and Denisovans are also unknown. All we know is that both of these events occurred during the Pit of Bones hominins time in Spain. The most likely scenario is that the fossils belong to a common ancestor of Neanderthals and Denisovans, and that some of their descendants later moved east and became Denisovans. But that doesn't explain why the bones physically resemble Neanderthals so much. They were probably Neanderthal ancestors who arrived after the species split from Denisovans. Because mitochondrial DNA is only passed down the female line, the Neanderthals could easily have lost the mitochondrial genes they shared with the Denisovans later on. If a woman only has sons, her mitochondrial DNA may be lost. This means the only way to figure out what happened is to sequence a full genome from the fossils, which is extremely difficult. The Pit of Bones genome is especially intriguing because it comes from a time very close to the origin of our human line. The ability to look into people's genes as well as their bones is a significant step forward. A complete genome would be priceless. We could determine which of our modern genes were already present and which had to be altered in order to produce modern humans. Furthermore, we may now know what our Neanderthal ancestor looked like. Two ancient human studies have shed new light on our last common ancestor with Neanderthals, an extinct species that was once considered could no longer be the one. Another appears to be more plausible now, though it may only be related to the ancestor. It's difficult to piece together how human populations were similar during the Middle Pleistocene because fossils are scarce and scattered. When trying to match a jawbone from Germany with a leg bone from Spain, for example, it's difficult to piece the evidence together. Since the discovery of the fossils, more Middle Pleistocene material has been studied in greater depth. Nonetheless, the story of human evolution and population relationships has been revealed to be even more complicated. The archaeological evidence suggests that these early humans were experimenting with novel behaviours. On the one hand, they were still using fairly primitive stone tools, such as a crafted hand axe found in the pit and dubbed Excalibur. Some speculate that the pit was an early burial site, possibly as part of a simple funeral rite. Excalibur may be a memorial to the dead. In any case, the new findings shed light on what the common ancestor might have looked like. We are shifting our thinking about the origins of Homo sapiens. Instead of a straight line from one species to the next, Many groups coexisted and occasionally interbred. This means that a Homo heidelbergensis-like creature did not simply evolve into modern humans, Neanderthals and Denisovans, though it is theoretically possible that a small Homo heidelbergensis-like population in Europe around 700,000 years ago was the common ancestor of the later humans. But there is another option. Instead, another obscure species, known as Homo antecessor, may now be considered as our last common ancestor. This species first appeared around one million years ago, and its face resembles that of modern humans. 
Surprisingly, this specimen was discovered in another cave only 300 meters from the Pit of Bones. In fact, Homo antecessor is a better candidate for the common ancestor. Between 1.2 million and 800,000 years ago, these hominins lived in northern Spain. Homo antecessor has a distinct combination of dental and skeletal characteristics. It had a very modern face, more like ours than the more primitive Homo heidelbergensis hominin. Thus, Homo antecessor is a better guide to the ancestor's appearance than Homo heidelbergensis. It has to be something with a more human-like face than us and Homo antecessor. In other words, Homo antecessor's modern-looking face is actually ancient, and our species has retained it, whereas Neanderthal's faces changed the most during their evolution. This is known as Neanderthalization, and it occurs when the skeleton evolved features such as thicker brow ridges from an ancestor who looked more like Homo sapiens. Recently, scientists extracted seven proteins from an 860,000-year-old Homo antecessor tooth. This is a significant breakthrough. The team discovered that the species was closely related to the last common ancestors of humans, Neanderthals and Denisovans, by comparing the Homo antecessor proteins with those of other hominins. Nevertheless, the researchers are unsure whether this creature was the last common ancestor. According to paleoproteomics evidence, Homo antecessor is more likely to be a sister group to Neanderthals, Denisovans and modern humans. That means we still don't know who all of these groups' last common ancestor was. There's also the matter of timing. If that ancestor lived 600,000 years ago, he would have lived at least 200,000 years after Homo antecessor. Yet the last common ancestor's exact age is still unknown. Because Neanderthal teeth differ from ours and teeth can evolve only so quickly, a recent study suggested the common ancestor lived more than 800,000 years ago. If that's the case, Homo antecessor is still a possibility. In fact, it is very likely, but most anthropologists are terrified of the implications of announcing that Homo sapiens' last common ancestor lived in Western Europe rather than the Dark Continent.